Welcome to worship. We're happy that you're here with us today. Let us join in our call to worship. God created all things. We, we celebrate, celebrate all, all that God created when, when we gather. gather. Whether we enter this worship space with clear hearts or the burden of sin, we, we were welcome in this place. place. Let us join in our opening song. confess our sins before God and one another. Creator of all things, we have, we have failed, failed to care, care for all that you have made. made. We, we have, have squandered resources and oppressed, oppressed others. others. Forgive, Forgive us for what we have done and have failed, failed to do. Teach us how to be steward of your creation with care and nurture. Amen. Friends, our God will always love all that God has made. Although we sin, God forgives. Receive now the entire forgiveness of all your sins, granted as a gift from a loving God. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. Join me as we pray our prayer of the day. God of second chances, when, when Jacob, Jacob lied, lied to his father, father and, and stole, stole from his brother, brother another, another might write him, him off. off. But you, but you did, did not, not, God. You saw, you saw something, something in him, him no, no one else, else saw. See that in us, too. Amen. Good morning, boys and girls. I hope that you are having a wonderful morning. Well, today, our story in our scripture lesson is about a family. And this family is made up of a mom and dad, Isaac and Rebecca, and their two twin sons. Esau and Jacob. Now, this family was kind of messed up. Today we would probably say they were dysfunctional. Probably, probably pretty normal. Each one of the parents loved one of the kids better. And it is 
We're going to hear about a story where there's lying and cheating and manipulation. Not cool. And there's also going to be some bad decisions and mistakes. So those things happen in families, don't they? In most families. So you may not think this is true, but sometimes I make mistakes. Sometimes I hurt other people. Sometimes I am like Rebecca. And actually, I am a Rebecca. So I can relate to her. So sometimes I'm like Rebecca. Sometimes I'm like Jacob. And there's some, some things where the truth doesn't come out. And sometimes I'm like Esau, and I don't, I just think about today. I don't worry about anything else. And sometimes I can't see where God is leading me, just like the blind Isaac. So I have a hunch that you kids and your parents are just like me, just like this family that I'm talking about. So when things go wrong and um, I make mistakes, I'm always comforted because I know that God will forgive me. And I know that God will forgive you also. And we learned from Jacob that God can see the good in us, even when we do bad things. And in our story, God forgives Jacob, and he blesses him, and he uses him for God's purposes. And it is amazing. So it doesn't matter how messed up we are. God loves us, God forgives us, and God gives us another chance. And God reminds us of the promises that he made to Abraham long ago. So kids, remember that. When you are down because of something, remember that you are loved. And I hope that you have a wonderful week. God bless you, and see you soon. Bye. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, you will notice in our lesson today that there are many verses and details missing from our scripture reading today. For some reason, the narrative lectionary gurus have decided to take a cookie-cutter approach to this Bible study. To make sense of this reading, we need to fill in some important details. So instead of reading this passage all at once, I will read it in three sections with dialogue in between. Last Sunday, we focused on Isaac when he was a child, helping his father Abraham with a burnt offering to God, only to find himself on the altar when Abraham's faith is tested. With his knife ready, God saw what was in Abraham's heart, and he provided a ram for the sacrifice instead of his only son. He reminded Abraham of the promises he made on that dark night that he would have many ancestors and they would be so many that they could not be counted, like the stars in the sky. God made it clear that Abraham was blessed to be a blessing for his family and future generations. Today, we jump ahead five cha chapters to when Isaac is a very old man. Overall, Isaac has had a good life, not perfect, but a good life. He married Rebecca, and after 20 years, she became pregnant, and surprise, they had twins. The oldest boy was named Esau. He was a hunter who liked being out in the wild. Great manners weren't his thing. He was rough and tough and hairy. He was his father's favorite son. His younger brother was named Jacob. He was quiet and smart. 
staying at home and taking care of the flocks were his favorite things to do. Unlike Esau, Jacob had smooth skin and he was Rebekah's favorite son. In those days, the oldest son inherited twice as much as the younger ones. This was called the birthright. Furthermore, God had promised the family of Isaac that they would receive great blessings. The son who was blessed by Isaac would be very fortunate. As he grew up, Esau didn't care much about his birthright or the idea of blessing. It wasn't important to him. All he cared about was the here and now. But Jacob, he was a smart one. He knew how important these things could be. He was always looking for a way to overcome his brother. One day, Esau came home tired and hungry. He saw Jacob cooking something and asked for a bowl of food. I'll give you something, Jacob said, if you give me your birthright. Fine, I don't care. I'm starving right now. So for a bowl of food, Esau traded his birthright. At the age of 40, Esau married two women from Canaan. In those days, having more than one wife was not a problem. However, what was not acceptable as was that his wives worshiped idols and they didn't follow the one true God. Even so, Isaac loved Esau more than Jacob. At this point, Isaac was very old and nearly blind. So we read the first four chapters, or first four verses. When Isaac was old and his eyes were dim so that he could not see, he called his elder son Esau and said to him, my son, and he answered, here I am. He said, see, I am old. I do not know the day of my death. Now then, take your weapons, your quiver and your bow, and go out to the field and hunt game for me. Then prepare for me savory food, such as I like, and bring it to me to eat, so that I may bless you before I die. Well, the plot thickens, and Rebecca overhears their conversation. And when Esau left to hunt for game so that he could prepare a meal for his father, she stepped into action. Rebecca wanted her favorite son to receive the blessing instead of Esau. After all, Jacob was smarter, and he would be a better leader. So she asked Jacob to bring her two goats from the flock to cook up a savory stew. Right now, there was a lot of work to do, so there was plenty of time to come up with a clever, deceptive, and shrewd plan to trick Jacob's father. So we continue on verse 15. Then Rebekah took the best garments of her elder son, Esau, which were with her in the house, and put them on her younger son Jacob. And she put the skins of the kids on the on his hands and put the smooth part of his and on the smooth part of his neck. Then he, she handed the savory food and the bread that she had prepared to her son Jacob. So he went to his father and said, My father. And he said, Here I am. Where who are you, my son? Jacob said to his father, I am Esau, your firstborn. I have done as you have told me. Now sit up and eat of my game so that you may bless me. But Isaac said to his son, How is it that you have found it so quickly, my son? He answered, Because the Lord your God granted me success. 
Then Isaac said to Jacob, Come near, that I may feel you, my son, to know whether you are really my son Esau or not. So Jacob went up to his father Isaac, who felt him and said, The voice is Jacob's voice, but the hands are the hands of Esau. He did not recognize him because his hands were hairy, like his brother Esau's hands. So he blessed him. When Esau returned, he prepared a meal for his father. He was so proud of the meal and excited and ready to receive Isaac's blessing. When Esau realized that his brother deceived him, he was hurt and confused. Jacob had, treated, Jacob had cheated him out of his birthright, and now he tricked him out of his blessing. Is there no blessing left for me, father, Esau said. Isaac sobbed, Jacob will have the best land, and his family will rule over you. I am so sorry, I cannot take this blessing back. This blessing is unique and non-transferable. Instead, Isaac gave him a second blessing. You will live by the sword, and your family must serve his family, and someday you will all be free from him. This wasn't a great blessing, but it was a better, it was a better blessing than nothing, and it was all going to come true sometime in the future. Esau was so angry, so angry that he was shouting out threats of murder. Rebecca warned Jacob that his life was in danger and es that Esau wanted to get even with him. So she and Isaac gave him instructions to flee to safety and to live with his uncle Laban until Esau's anger subsided. Today, it's hard to understand why Rebecca and Jacob would go to all the trouble to trick Esau out of his blessings, out of Isaac's blessings. One might think that it would be easier for Jacob to just ask for a different blessing but in the Old Testament culture, blessing is more than a thought or a prayer. It is more than just nice words. It is more like the word of God. It is something that does something. It is a word that creates and seals a promise. God made a covenant with Abraham which was handed on to him, which was handed on to Isaac, and then it was to be handed on to his son Esau, the oldest. As we learned last week, God's blessings came with an enormous weight of responsibility. Abraham nearly killed his son to earn God's trust so that he might bear such a blessing. God's covenant was not to be taken lightly. And J Jacob had no idea how this blessing was going to change his life. By tricking Isaac out of the blessing, Jacob became the bearer of responsibility and re the recipient of God's promises. So we move forward to chapter 28. Jacob left Beersheba and went toward Haran. He came to a certain place and stayed there for the night because the sun had set. Taking one of the stones of the place, he put it under his head and lay down in the place, and he dreamed that there was a ladder set up on the earth, the top of it reaching into heaven, and angels, and the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. And the Lord stood beside him and said, I am the Lord, the God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac, the land on which you lie. 
I will give you and your offspring, and your offspring shall be like the dust of the earth, and you shall spread abroad to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south, and all the families of the earth shall be blessed in you and in your offspring. Know that I am with you and will keep you wherever you go and will bring you back to this land, for I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. Then Jacob woke from the, his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I did not know it. And he was afraid and said, How awesome is this place. This is none other than the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. The consequences of Jacob tricking Esau out of his blessing were many. He was now a refugee on the run. Jacob had nothing. He had left his home, his family, his possessions all behind him. His relationships were shattered. He was all alone. As he traveled, he hit, it hit him hard that he was truly suffering from his sin, suffering from making poor choices, suffering he brought upon himself. Today, many would say that Jacob deserved his fate. Others may wonder why something terrible didn't happen to him. He certainly deserved to be punished. Others might question God's choice of making a covenant with Jacob. After all, he lied, he cheated, he manipulated, and he stole. Why would God think Jacob would ever be anything more than a liar and a cheat and a thief. But God did see something in Jacob nobody else saw. While on the road in the dark, with Jacob's head on a nice soft rock, God gifted Jacob a dream. In it, Jacob saw angels ascending and descending from heaven. And the image in my mind is, it sounds like a giant elaborate escalator up and down. And this is a cool vision. However, the most important part of this passage is that God appeared right next to Jacob and God promised to continue the covenant God made with Abraham and Isaac. God, Jacob would be the bearer of this promise. God would use this less than perfect man to fulfill his promises. And God promised Jacob and his descendants land, safety, and God's continued presence. It was quite a gift for someone with Jacob's history. Think about it. God met Jacob out in the world, right where he was suffering, and he, was, and he gave words of forgiveness, encouragement, and promise. God didn't wait to meet Jacob in the synagogue or in the church, but he met him right where he was in the midst of his suffering. God came to Jacob even though he had faults and imperfections, even though he cheated and lied, even though he made mistakes and bad, made bad decisions. The good news is that God comes to us exactly in the same way. He comes to us in the midst of our suffering. And it is there that God reaffirms his promises to us and carries us through today and into the future. Immediately after the dream, Jacob recognized that God had given him a tremendous gift, and Jacob was filled with fear and respect. From that moment, he moved through life with the knowledge of this privilege and responsibility. You could say that Jacob grew up rather quickly, 
but we know that he doesn't change all at once. Jacob will continue to be a trickster for years, but that's the amazing thing about the story. It isn't about Jacob. It is about God. It's about God and God's faithfulness. Despite Jacob's shortcomings, and we all have them, God saw something else. And God let God's love for God's people outshine anything that people can do to dim that light. Jacob became the bearer of the responsibility and the recipient of God's promises. Jacob learned from a dream that he would be the one to carry the blessing. God's blessings have been given not only to Jacob and his family, but also to us, all of us. We, dear friends, are blessed to be a blessing for our families, our friends, this church, our community, and the world all the days of our lives. This is an awesome privilege and responsibility, one not to be taken lightly. And it sounds almost overwhelming, doesn't it? But you can do it. You can do it because God will be with you every step of the way. Amen. join together as we profess our faith with the words of the Apostles Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. 
He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Friends, we pray now for the church, the world, and all those in need. Dear Lord, you reach past all our trickery, our dishonesty, our ill-gotten gain, and insist upon being a close and inescapable communion with us. Take what we meant for our own self-promotion and use it to your glory, turning us around to a new awareness of the tall task of being your followers. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Indeed, we are like the dust of the earth, spread abroad to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south. May your children truly be instruments of your peace, that all the families of the earth might be blessed because of our witness. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Reach out to those who feel disenfranchised, robbed of what they feel was rightfully theirs. Give them courage to stand for justice and reparation and to also find peace in you that no other could possibly give or take away. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We are feeble at times, Lord. Our health fails, our strength flags. We long for the blessing of your healing and ask it especially this day on behalf of all those that we remember in our prayer ministry here at First Lutheran and those people in situations weighing heavy on our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. As descendants of Abraham and with all of your saints in glory, we rejoice in the mercy which you show to your family on earth and in heaven. Keep us faithful until that day when we are brought face to face with you. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. You have shown us wonders, and yet we shall see greater things yet. May our prayers rise to you, and may we trust that you have mercifully heard the cries of our hearts for the sake of Jesus, our brother, who taught us to pray. Our, our Father, Father, who, who art, art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy, thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come, thy will, will be, be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and, and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as, as we forgive, forgive those who trespass, trespass against, against us. us. And lead, and lead us, us not, not into temptation, temptation but, but deliver us from evil. evil. For thine, For thine is, is the kingdom, kingdom and, the and the power and the and glory, glory forever, forever and, and ever. ever. Amen. Amen. Friends, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Oh. to thee, nearer 
Christ be in mercy Friends, be well, be blessed, and remember that you are the church wherever you may be.